and painted all so recently. I sit and wonder what we seem to know, how we sure it all works out. You'll make the sauce, I'll make the dough, soon we'll see what it's about. Hi all, I'm Tony. This is SV Tapatia and we are building a, a cruising sailboat. And I'm going to quantify that this week. Cruising sailboat, you know, what do I mean by a cruising sailboat? And, and what I mean is, is a boat that's built, designed, constructed for, for a couple to live aboard in comfort, uh, well, in reasonable comfort at the very least, and to be able to travel whilst living on that boat uh, the boat should be capable enough to, to go places, um, oceans, seas, rivers, canals, all of those, all sorts of waterways really. So it doesn't, shouldn't have too much draft, should be comfortable, should be capable. Um, sailboat should be capable of, of travelling long distance under sail, but also, um, also hope to do some canal work with her, so with the mast laid down, so also needs a capable motor, hence we've got the, the inboard motor as well. And that's what we're building. It should be a comfortable traveling liveaboard boat for two, room enough for one guest in, in a degree of comfort, more guests in perhaps slightly less comfort. And yeah, that's what we're doing. And uh, let's have a look at what we've been doing this week, shall we? And as you've just seen work, has continued on the sole, the cabin sole this week. We've got all of the saloon sole finished, back in place, the, the screwing down isn't complete yet. The section alongside the galley stove is now in progress. And then there's one more section in the galley area to do. Um, but looking good, pleased with that. It makes for a nice thick board. What we've got, we've got 12 millimeter ply underboards and then um, yeah about eight millimeters of, of oak on top of that a good eight so the, the finished boards at least 20 mil thick nice thick heavy boards feel stable feel solid very pleased with that looking good and here we are looking up into the quarter berth and you'll see on the engine room side I've clad it, clad it with grey EVA foam pads and on the hull side in black Now one thing I did this week was to remake those, you see, one, two, three boards there that are obviously new. Uh, I wasn't happy with the layout of the boards previously, so remade those so they're ready to go now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, and what we'll have in the end is that that middle section there will be a lift out board. Everything else will be fitted down with screws that could be taken out quickly if need be. And then if I spin around, those two there, one, two, between the mahogany stripes, will be lift out. So the area here by the mast step will be just fixed permanently. So we'll have three lift out boards down the center. I've got those brass finger ring things to put in there to make the lifting out easier. Coming on, and I dare say at some stage I'll put some retaining straps under those boards for ocean sailing. Something I was going to talk about is that uh, I wanted to say thank you really to a couple of you that um, put me on to uh, Alan at Wave Rover. Now, Alan at Wave Rover um, has published plans for a homemade wind vane, and it's the perfect wind vane design for this boat because it's a trim tab. Uh, trim tab basically means, if you don't know, basically means you've got a small rudder attached to the back of the main rudder on its own pintles. And as you turn the trim tab rudder, it affects the flow of water over the main rudder and servo steers the main rudder. It's a fairly simple principle. Uh, but anyway, I'll say Alan from Wave Rover has developed one himself. He's put a fair bit of time and effort into developing this and he's published the plans. And they're for sale. He's got a YouTube channel. You'll find his YouTube channel if you're interested, um, where he talks about this wind vane. And there's a link to purchase the plans. Uh, I think it was $25 I think I paid. Not very much for these plans. And they come along comprehensive plans and three unlisted YouTube videos on how to build the thing. So thank you. I think there are two of you who, who put me onto Alan there. Oh, I knew his channel already, but but put me onto his wind vane design in here. Um, thoroughly recommended. So if you want to build your own wind vane, get there, buy his plans. And uh, I shall be building it in due course. And of course I'll video that and show you how we'll get on with it. And hopefully later how it works. And while I'm thanking people, a massive thank you from me to everybody who's supported this channel, be that via Patreon um, or PayPal, or merchandising, t-shirts, challenge coins, music perhaps. Thank you very much, it's really appreciated. It uh, helps keep the channel going really. And talking of Patreon, there are a number of, of free, available to everybody videos over on the Patreon site. Um, behind the scenes they're called, talking about various bits of the boat build in more detail, about the cameras, about um, video making various aspects of sailing, boat building, whatever. As I say, they're over there, available, available to everybody. So go and have a look. This was a big event this week. This is, this is the first two sections of what will be the rudder. Two 15 millimeter ply profiles um, of the basic shape of the rudder. And what you'll also see here is a what will be the cross section of the wetting area of the rudder. So this is an NACA 0015 airfoil profile that this, that this wetted area of the rudder will, will take. So I say first two 15 millimeter sections. Now, a lot of thought went into this, a lot of measuring, a lot of careful calculation. Some other Benford Dory builders have, have commented on the rudder and made suggestions for improvements to the rudder. Um, I think I'm very fortunate because the Benford 31 for 8, which this is, is the most recent of the Benford Dory designs. And I think the rudder designs that come with this are, are taking most current experience and considerations into, into account. So I think the rudder is, is good anyhow. But I wanted to be careful. So this is as planned by Benford, actually. Um, and what we've got is, I say, the, the design waterline, the weighted area, um, and the balance area. The balance is everything that's forward of the pivot, so which is approximately this line. Um, and when you calculate the ratio of rudder area to balance area, it should be somewhere around the 20 to 1, which, which this works out correct. It is 20 to 1. Happy with that. I say it's going to take the air for a profile. Um, so several more layers to come on here. 
Uh, the whole thing's going to be glued up. And the reason why it stood here loose at the moment is, is that the glue is on order. It was supposed to be three to four days delivery time and it's not here yet. I suppose it'll arrive in due course. But as soon as it arrives, I shall glue these up and start gluing more layers on so I can plane it into that airfoil shape. And uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. It's a good start. impossible to do. We've got to get a parallel, haven't we? We've got to get parallel to that. That distance from that point there up to So I've calculated the balance of the rudder and it's come out to be 18.55%. Um, and I'd like just to have a little bit more. So I'm just going to shift this back half inch and cut that line just to bring us up to the 20% of balance, which will make me happier.
starting to get the first hints of varnish on the stairs here. You'll notice one other thing that's happened here is that this fiddle has appeared that's new and uh, it's come out very well, I'm pleased with it. It was a tatty old board that I had, I've had kicking about for years, decades. And when I put it through the planar thicknesser, um, it came up beautifully. I think it's a bit of sycamore or maple, basically. And it came up beautifully. I'm really, really pleased with the way it's gone in there. It's a nice, strong fiddle that will keep the, the mattress in place nicely. Yeah, it's looking good. So that quarter berth is basically done. Just waiting for, I'm going to get some underlay in there on a mattress, obviously. But we're about done. And down below that fiddle, you'll see there's a bit of tidying up work needed here, some holes to fill, a bit of new paintwork needed. Coming on, I'm going to say got the first coat of varnish on the top step of that fiddle, not the middle step actually, which is strange. And that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Give us your thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already. And we'll be back. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.